In the future, people use androids known as surrogates to carry out their everyday activities instead of going outside. By employing special chairs that connect them to the androids by neuropathic signals, people may control their surrogates from the comforts of their own homes. The individual who is harmed by the surrogate does not suffer, but they do enjoy all of the joys that the surrogates do. Because of this people may make their surrogates perform all kinds of wild antics and can decide how they want to seem making everyone on the streets appear young and attractive. Crime and illness are declining rapidly and hate is eroding from society. But some people, known as dreads, oppose the employment of surrogates and live in small, isolated areas, because they believe that doing so is the same as living in deception. They call their leader the prophet and he frequently issues broadcasts requesting that people get up from their chairs. A wealthy man goes to a club one evening in the city charges into the crowd and then approaches a woman bringing her to an alleyway where they exchange kisses. Just thereafter, a weird man appears, electrocutes the two of them, destroys the surrogates, and rides off on a bike. The murderer speeds to the point where he flips and crashes a car. Agents Peters and Greer from the FBI show up at the crime site a short while later. A police officer tells them that although the female surrogate is registered, the male victim isn't, and the owner hasn't filed any complaints. Greer takes it to examine even though the surrogate's memory chip is burnt and both of its eyes are burned out. Upon entering the female surrogate's owner's residence, the agents discover that the man is lifeless and has a bleeding nose. Upon inspecting the controls, they find that the female surrogate observed her partner's eyes burning out just before the broadcast was interrupted. Greer then confirms that he also utilizes a surrogate by returning home and having a glass of water by himself. The real Greer gets up from the control chair and walks into a child's room where he looks at a picture of himself with his wife and their child, as the android parks itself in the closet. He then follows up with his wife Maggie, who speaks with him via surrogate. Greer wants to go on a genuine vacation that is, without using the android bodies. He also notes that just their surrogates have been seeing each other for a long, and Maggie claims that this is preferable. When other classmates discover Jared dead and covered in blood on his chair the following morning, it is clear that he was the one responsible for the destroyed male surrogate. Shortly after, Greer's supervisor Andrew informs the agents that two individuals have lost their lives as a result of an attack by their surrogates. Later, when Greer and Peters review the video that the surrogates remembered, they see a man brandishing a weapon and deduce that this was most likely a homicide. Then they receive a call telling them that Jared is the son of surrogacy pioneer Lionel. Although Lionel's business, virtual self-industries, is among the largest in the world, his partners sacked him nearly 10 years ago. Lionel has been a recluse ever then. Even nevertheless, the agents track him down and pay Lionel a visit. One of Lionel's surrogates greets them and tells them he's never been close to Jared. In the hopes that it would strengthen their relationship, he also gave Jared one of his surrogates when he went to college. Greer tries to soothe Lionel after Peters asks a series of insensitive questions by expressing condolences on behalf of himself as he too lost a kid. Greer questions if someone would want to hurt Jared or Lionel, and Lionel discovers that the killer had been pursuing him and was unaware that Jared was in control of the surrogate. The surrogate abruptly goes off and Lionel emerges sitting in his chair, sobbing uncontrollably because he killed his son. Greer and Peters then visit VSI to question the officials regarding deaths caused by the destruction of surrogates. The delegates take offense and declare that the surrogates have safeguards in place to prevent such issues. The engineer examines the fried chip when the agents present it to him and notes that the only possible cause is that all of the circuits may fry at once. Additionally, he informs them that the military recently delivered a truck full of surrogates who were missing their identifying chips and optics. After that, the agents visit a military camp where a number of surrogate soldiers enlist the help of the surrogates to fight in a distant conflict. The person in charge of it simply replaces the surrogate when one is damaged by a shot. A colonel informs the operatives that the military's weaponry is powerless against the individuals in charge of them and that specific components are removed for study. Peters eventually recognizes the man brandishing the weapon as Miles, a person who doesn't employ surrogates, at the station later on. Before long, Bobby, the technician who doesn't use a surrogate either tells them that Miles has been located by the monitoring department because the FBI has access to all of the surrogate's feeds in the city. Greer dashes to join the chase team, but Peters stays with Bobby to monitor Miles' activities. Bobby receives an alarm and finds a man abusing a woman at a hotel, he promptly obtains a disconnection warrant to stop those surrogates. Peters is concerned that the program might end up in the wrong hands and is astonished to hear that this is possible. He also doubts the morality and legality of the practice. While all is going on, Miles is riding his bike around the city, and Greer is pursuing them in a helicopter. With the bike, Mike can maneuver through tight spots and perform some wild stunts to gain the upper hand, but finally he gets surrounded and crashes into an alley, which gives the cops instant access to him. Miles abruptly draws a gun and fires shots at the cops, shocking them with a shockwave that causes the surrogate's eyeballs to jump out and convulse. Then he fires at the helicopter, forcing Greer to instantly disconnect. 
as the pilot is struck by electrical current spinning down the aircraft. Miles rushes to a dread colony, only to have his helicopter crash into it. Greer returns to his surrogate at that precise moment and plunges into the dread zone as well. Fortunately, he just sustains a broken arm and sets off to pursue Miles right away. However, the dreads become enraged upon discovering a surrogate in their territory and begin after Greer as well. Miles starts attempting to use his weapon again as they race through various slum areas, but it isn't functioning. Greer leaps and climbs over different structures to get the upper hand, but in the process he gets struck by a truck. He merely keeps moving forward because he is incapable of feeling pain, and eventually he corners Miles and demands the weapon. Greer receives his bag from Miles, but before he can open it he is shot. Miles disconnects from his surrogate as a woman calls him an abomination and keeps shooting at him while he returns the bag. When Greer tries to leave his room at home while bleeding, he passes out in the hallway. Maggie is lucky enough to locate him and dial an ambulance. Miles wakes up later and finds the prophet and his men searching his home for the weapon. Miles acknowledges he doesn't know where the weapon originates from when the prophet asks. He is paid to use the weapon by an unknown someone who contacts him using disposable phones, but he is unaware of this. News channels quickly report that the prophet has declared a revolution against the surrogate society and views the down chopper as a personal attack on the dread. Greer wakes up at the hospital as well, and Andrew tells him he's been suspended. Greer filled with rage, storms out of the hospital and meets Peters, however, he begins to feel lightheaded as they walk. Seems to be an aftereffect of utilizing a surrogate for an extended period of time. Peters attempts to find him a new surrogate, but something feels off about those arbitrary models. Greer makes the decision to visit the dread colony, and because he is a real person, he is admitted. He's disturbed to see his surrogate crucified as he glances about. He attends the funeral after learning about Miles' passing. The prophet speaks and tells everyone that true humanity which androids lack is demonstrated by death. Greer tries to approach the prophet after the burial, but the prophet stops him with a beating from his thugs, reminding him that suffering is a natural human emotion. Greer leaves as the prophet responds to his question regarding the weapon with derision and laughter. Subsequently, the prophet emerges from his trailer and discloses that he has concealed the weapon beneath his floor. Greer is picked up in the interim by another of Lionel's surrogates, who informs him that he is utilizing a fresh model, since his life is in jeopardy. Greer shares his own experience with him, and informs him that Prophet murdered Jared's murderer. Nothing is sadder than a father outliving their child, and his son passed away in an automobile accident. Lionel notes that they will find out who is attempting to assassinate him if they figure out where the weapon originates. Given their dearth of resources, the dreads were unable to have produced it. Greer discovers Maggie and her pals having a crazy party when he arrives home. He fights with her in private because he wants to see her in her true light, not as a hedonistic stand-in. Maggie claims it's impossible since she's changed. Enraged, Greer smashes up a partygoer on his way out, only to discover metal behind the phony flesh. Greer departs, and Maggie stand and visits the chair to examine the real body. Maggie sobs as she pulls off her goggles. Greer finds out upon his return to headquarters that the VSI had a weapon contract with the military, but it was discontinued for an undisclosed reason. A surrogate breaks into Peter's house in the nighttime to examine all of her chair recordings and discovers Bobby's program, which has the ability to stop all of the surrogates. After giving Peter's multiple gunshot wounds, he takes her system and links it to a different individual. The stand-in for Peters is prepared to go at headquarters. Greer meets with the colonel once more the following day and presents him with an image of the weapon. The colonel acknowledges that's the weapon the military was commissioned to use, but all of the prototypes were allegedly destroyed once it was realized that the people behind the surrogates were also being killed. Greer tells the colonel that the weapon is with the dreads and he declares that the military will retrieve it. The prophet hands the weapon to his troops at the dreads zone and gives them the order to give it to Peters. Afterwards, Greer makes an effort to discuss their relationship and their son's passing with Maggie. Maggie becomes irate and remarks that the only reason she's still alive is because surrogate gives her a way out of the real world. Maggie exits her surrogate and takes a pill, while Greer persists on attempting to have a conversation. The military will soon be entering the dread zone in order to seize the weapon. The prophet and his men attempt to flee as the locals fear and hide, but they are trapped by the soldiers. Both sides start firing right away but the military has the advantage of having more soldiers and equipment, so the Prophet's group is rapidly routed. In the process, the Prophet is shot, and the soldiers are surprised to discover he is a surrogate as they approach him. As it happens, Lionel has been in charge of the Prophet the entire time. Greer sees Peters in the interim, and Peters informs him that Andrew had paid Miles to assassinate Lionel. Greer assumes that the VSI provided him with the weapon to kill Lionel, in retaliation for his anti-surrogate movement, 
so he heads straight to headquarters to confront Andrew. Greer stabs Andrew in the back of the head as he turns away, forcing the surrogate to stop talking. Greer then examines Andrew's computer and downloads all of the conspiracy-related data. The real Andrew phones the other agents as Greer is leaving the premises, instructing them to take Greer into custody for assault. Greer meets Peters in her car after that, not yet realizing someone else is using the surrogate. Greer adds that he has discovered the codes required to trigger the special weapon, and that Andrew's files have shown that Lionel is financing the anti-surrogacy campaign. When a truck strikes them and pushes the car off the road Peters calls headquarters to let them know where to find Greer. Greer chases after Peters as she leaves with a weapon and access codes starting a vicious chase that leaves multiple accidents and extensive street damage in its wake. Greer ends up smashing into a store, allowing Peters to escape thanks to her incredible jumps and the ability to sidestep it because to her surrogate body. Greer quickly hides and moves stealthily to steal a car, before a number of FBI investigators arrive to search for him. Then he phones Bobby and requests that he stop using Peters' surrogate. But it's too late, because Bobby was already handcuffed by Peters when he reached him. Peters is currently attempting to access the whole surrogate network. When Andrew discovers that Lionel is in control of her, he tries to reason with her at that same moment. Desperate to save his son's life, Andrew tries to persuade Lionel that using surrogates is beneficial for society. However, Lionel wants people to live like real humans, so he pulls the trigger to kill Andrew. With the intention of killing everyone utilizing a surrogate, Peters then begins downloading a virus to the network. A little while later, Greer shoots the stand-in security guards to get inside Lionel's home. After looking throughout the home, he ultimately discovers a hidden entrance. Once inside, he sees a room full of surrogates, including the Prophet and Peters' killer. Wheelchair dwelling Lionel points a gun at Greer, telling him that he's doing humanity a favor because those inside surrogates are already dead. When the computer indicates that the virus has finished uploading, a content Lionel uses a chemical substance to self-delete. Next, Greer moves Lionel out of the chair and establishes a connection with Peter's proxy. He phones Bobby right away, and Bobby tells him how to get rid of the virus. Greer stops the transmission in the last second, sparing all of the human users, but the virus continues to infect the surrogates and is ready to wipe them out. Bobby wishes to educate Greer how to put an end to that as well, but Greer lets it continue. So there are no more surrogates in the world. An FBI agent shows up as the infection becomes active and shoots Peter's surrogate. Surrogates quickly shut down and begin to fall from all across the planet leaving lifeless robots on the buildings and streets. Greer exits Lionel's house and observes the folks leaving, dazed and perplexed. Greer eventually gets to hug the real Maggie again when he arrives home. The news reports that surrogates are no longer in use, but no one was harmed, therefore humanity must now learn to live anew.